I'm telling you what's the truth. Mm. God's word. Oh, Jesus. God's word is amazing. All right, y'all. So we started last week. We started last week on a teaching. And it's simply called Be Healed. All right. And and, and as God was downloading this, as the coach was downloading this, I, I refer to the Holy Spirit as the coach, y'all. That, that's just how we talk, you know. Um, and and as, as he was downloading stuff to me this week, I'm telling you. I, I was just writing stuff down and I don't want to miss nothing he said. I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss sharing nothing with y'all that he said to me. All right. So I look, I got it on my tablet because I want to make sure I say everything. All right. So listen, I want you to get something to write on. I'm telling you, get something to write on because, because you're going, you're going to wish you had her. I'm going to tell you, you're going to wish you had her. All right. You ain't going to be able to go back and say, I wish I should have, could have, would have. You need to go ahead right now and get something to write on. Get your piece of paper. All right. Now, whew, thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for who you are. Use me right now in Jesus name. OK, so be healed is what we actually um, started a series on last week. And y'all know me. I, I like to build. I like to build a foundation. I, I like to show you what God's word says and the truth that's there. OK, so that we are all on the same page. OK, and so the, the question that I'm going to put on the table before you, before we even get started, is what health issue? What health issue are you presently tolerating? What health issue are you presently dealing with? What health issue has shown up in your life as if it has the right <laughs> to be there? I want you to write that on the paper. You know, we gonna, we, I want you to write that on the paper. It, it, it has shown up in your life like it has the right to be there. Mm. Okay? I, I want you to just put that on the paper. I, I just want you to put the name of it. Just, just put the name on it. Okay? All right? Put the name on the paper. So, what is God's will? Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Coach. What is God's will, man, regarding healing? Mm, 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 mm. What is God's will regarding healing? So in order to know what God's will is, see, we, we sometimes say, I don't know what God's will is. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Because it's in his word. So let's see what God's will is in regards to healing because we're building a case and then we're going to go back and we're going to look at some stuff. All right. So John 10, 30. John 10, 30. We can ready to establish something because we get to see how God operates, who God is, what God feels, what God thinks as we look at Jesus Christ, don't we? Hmm. Yeah. When we look in his word, we look in the Old Testament, we see what God said. Yes, that's another way. But in the New Testament, when Jesus was here on the earth, Jesus said in John 10, 30, the Father and I are one. The Father and I are one. So that means that they are one and the same. Okay, so let, let's look at John 1. Let's go back. John 1. Verses one through two. We're going to look at something else. We're building a case. Remember, building a case. He says, in the beginning was the word. Hmm. Who are you talking about? Who, who, who's he talking about? Talking about Jesus. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So that's just another verse just proving that God and Jesus are one the same. Because we're trying to build a case here. All right. John 5, 19. John 5, 19. I'm trying not to go too fast. I'm trying to slow it down because y'all know I can go from zero to 60 in a minute. So I'm trying to slow it back. Trying to slow it down. So John 5, 19 says, so Jesus is talking here. And Jesus explained, he said, my favorite thing, I tell you what's the truth. Mm, 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 mm. The son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees 
the father doing? Whatever the father does, the son also does. All right, y'all with me? John 5, 30, building the case. Jesus is talking. I can do nothing on my own. Mm. I judge as God tells me. Therefore, my judgment is just because I carry out the will of the one who sent me, not my own will. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So what have we established in just those few verses? That God and Jesus are one and the same, but that whatever you saw Jesus doing here on earth mm, is a representation of what the father believes and what the father wants done. All right. I need some hearts. Y'all, I want to make sure y'all, y'all hear me. I want to make sure y'all understanding what I'm saying. So give me some hearts so I can make sure we're on the same page. All right. Before I keep on moving. All right. Okay. So let's look at John 8, 28. Mm, 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 mm. John 8, 28. Jesus therefore said, when you lift up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and I do nothing, absolutely positively nothing on my own initiative. But I speak these things as the father taught me. Mm, mm, mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> See, I don't need to leave. I don't need to lose me, y'all. I'm telling you, don't leave. Don't leave because I'm telling you, it's going to get gooder and gooder. Don't leave. Okay. See, that's the, we got to make sure we're sitting down at God's word and listening to what he's saying without all the theatrics so that we can get this word in us and transform our thinking and transform our minds. Okay. All right. So he says, I don't say nothing, not unless the father tells me. So let's look at Matthew 4, 23. So let's see what it is Jesus did in regards to healing. Matthew 4, 23, and he went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and doing what? Healing every disease and every affliction among the people. So Jesus is healing folk. That's in line with what the father wants because we just found out he don't do nothing that the father doesn't ask him to do. Matthew 10, 1. And he called to him his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. All right. We're still seeing the heart of God. Matthew 8, 16. That evening, they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons and he cast out the spirits with a word mm, and healed all who were sick. Still seeing God. Luke 5, 17. I'm going to get somewhere. Y'all just hang in there with me. On one of those days, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him. But it says it was with him to do what? To heal. So again, we're seeing how the father thinks. We're seeing what the father believes. And I can go on and on and on with scripture after scripture to show you that God's will is for us to be healed. He said, of course, in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Man, I'm telling you, if you want the rest of these scriptures, I can give them all to you because there's so many more. He says, of course, in, in, in Isaiah 53, 5, it says, but he was wounded. Talking about who? Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement 
that brought us peace. See, everything that came upon Jesus on the cross was from us. All the sin, all the diseases. And we shared that with y'all last week, that whenever Jesus was on the cross and they were talking about how he was dis figured that it wasn't only from the beating but it was also from the diseases that came off of us the sin of the entire world that was on his body and so that's why he looked did not look like a man because not only had he been beaten but he also carried all of our diseases and carried all of our sicknesses and all of our sorrows upon his body can you imagine that a body that is full of cancer a body that is full of you know I'm going to just say eczema skin diseases a, a body that's uh, full of uh, autoimmune diseases a body that's full of diseases that they don't even have a cure for anymore a body full of leprosy all all over him my god mm. and here he is on the cross mm. Mm -mm -mm. presenting his body that had no sin of his own in it but it was all our sin and he died on the cross and his blood covered paid for a bill we couldn't pay lord have mercy and the Bible says after he did all of that by his stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. Are healed. Are healed. Present tense. Are healed. So listen, mm, Jesus, this is what I've been trying to get to today. Woo. So based on these verses, based on these verses, we can agree, right? That we know it's God's will that we be healed. Based on these verses, we know that it's God's will that we be healed. And see, I, I like to go back to the place of first mention. I like to go back to the place of first mention to make sure that I fully understand God's will. So let's, let's go back to Genesis. <laughs> Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis 1, 26. Mm, 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 mm. Genesis 1, 26. I'm going to give y'all time to get there. Lord have mercy. Genesis 1, 26. I tell you, I miss my handsome husband being here to dialogue with me because I know he's got some nuggets that he's going to want to share. So he's going to have to double share next Sunday. All right. So let me ask you a question. Was it God's will for Adam and Eve to get diseases and eventually die? Mm. Wow. Verse 26, Genesis 1. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Wow. Put your, keep your finger there. Keep your finger there. Was it God's will again for Adam and Eve to get diseases and eventually die? No. <laughs> God's will was for Adam and Eve and their descendants to be healthy and live forever. Wow. 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 Had they not sinned, had Adam not sinned, they would still be here today, healthy and alive. Lord have mercy. See, wrap your mind around that. Wrap your mind around that. They will still be here in good health and alive had Adam not sinned. Look, God placed everything Adam could have ever wanted in front of him. He placed everything Adam could have ever wanted in front of him and even told him what the best choices were and that if he made the wrong choice, there would be repercussions. 
there would be a price to pay. Lord have mercy. I need y'all. I need y'all to get what I'm getting ready to tell y'all. Okay. I need y'all to get what I'm getting ready to share with you. Through the years, y'all, some have asked the question as I have before and y'all probably have before too. God, why did you place the forbidden tree right there knowing it could cause the destruction that it has? Knowing it could cause if they made their own choice, it, it could cause disease and, and sickness and death. Why did you place it there? Why did you put it there? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I need y'all. Are y'all hearing me? I ain't even looking. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Y'all hearing me this morning? Mm. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Mm -mm -mm -mm. In the past, y'all, I've taught. That one of the reasons was because God didn't want robots. I've told y'all that. He wants people who would freely choose him and obey him. All right? But this week, I, I, I was spending time with Coach. I was spending time with the Holy Spirit. And I believe the Coach showed me something even deeper. So I want y'all to grab this. I want y'all to get this. He said, Lord have mercy. He said, God had to place the tree there. Mm, Lord have mercy. God had to place the tree there. Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time for the Holy Spirit. God had to place the tree there. Because had he not placed it there, he would have gone against his own word. It would have made God a liar. And I was like, huh? What? In Genesis 1, we just read. It said, God said to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's who he's talking to. Let us make man in our own image to be like us. Let us make man in our own image to be like us. In other words, let's make extensions of ourselves. See, when we, when we think about extensions of ourselves here on earth, we're talking about, you know, extensions of, of who we are. Uh, majority of the time, we're talking about our children. They are extensions of who we are. They're little bitty us's, okay? They're, they're little bitty me's, okay? Um, and then, of course, sometimes when you mentor somebody, you take somebody up under your wing and you're teaching them, they begin to talk like you, you know, act like you, say things like you would. And you're listening to them sometimes. You're like, that's my voice. Mm, they sound just like me. OK. And so they're extensions of who you are. OK. But as as as, you know, human beings and as parents, when I think of an extension of myself, I think of our girls. OK. I think of our daughters. All right. So what he's saying is let's make extensions of ourselves. So we are extensions of our father. We, we are extensions of our heavenly father. Lord have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. So God made us to be like him. I'm going somewhere. Y'all stay with me. Y'all stay with me. God made us to be like him. So Psalm 8, 5, that's why it says that God made us a little lower. Mm. Scripture says than angels, but if you look it up in the Hebrew, Jesus, it says God made us a little lower than himself. Lord have mercy. I don't know who that's for today. I don't know who that's for today, but you need to understand who you are. God has made you a little lower than himself. Mm, 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 mm. If you look at Hebrews 1 4, it'll explain it to you even more. So I encourage you to study that this week. Study Psalm 8 5 and Hebrews 1 4 so you can begin to see what I'm talking about in case you don't believe what I'm saying. God made us a little lower than Himself. Now I'm getting back to what the Holy Spirit, what Coach said to me then. Mm. So God made us in His image, right? We are extensions of Him, right? We're, we're little bitty. He's the big G. Mm. He's the big G. And see, some folk, ooh, some folk can't take what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm just repeating scripture. He's the big G, but in the word, it says we the little G. Lord have mercy. We are up under him. 
We are extensions of him. He has made us a little lower than himself. Mm. Yeah, are y'all getting this? Are do y'all hear me this morning? Lord Jesus, do y'all hear me this morning? So, if we were created, if we were created in his image, if we were created in his image and God has the power to choose, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. He had to also give us that same power. If we're created in his image, I'm going to say it one more time. If we're created in his image and God has the power to choose, he had to also give us that same power. He had to allow us to choose because he had given us the power and the ability inside of us to do so. Lord have mercy, Jesus, Lord have mercy. I, I'm gonna say it another way. He had already given Adam the power to choose the names of all the animals. He had given Adam, Adam named the animals y'all because God put one right in front of him after another and say, you name them. You choose what they're going to be called. That's why a dog is called a dog. That's why a pig is called a pig and a cow is called a cow and a snake is called a snake because God put them in front of Adam and said, you choose their names. Lord. Woo, mm -mm. So God had given us the power and the authority inside of us way back then at the beginning of time when he created Adam to choose. So what does that have to do with the tree? Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus, Lord have mercy. Well, before I get to the tree, listen to this. Mm. Adam even had, and I, I believe this. Oh my God. When, when, when Adam was trying to find a mate, Bible lets us know he was looking, but he saw all these animals and he ain't seen nothing he was attracted to. He saw all these animals running around that he had named. Name that one, name that one, name that one. But none of them didn't float his boat. None of them, you know, didn't appeal or he wasn't appeased. None of them. He ain't like none of them. Okay. Not for himself. And so God, of course, we know, put him to sleep, pulls his rib out, create this woman. And God, the scriptures say, if you go back to the King James, it says, God presented, mm, 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 mm. God presented the woman. See, if you go back and do a study on that word, Lord Jesus, I'm trying to go back and do a study on that word presented. What he did was he presented the woman in front of him. Like you presenting a presentation, you're presenting something and the people that you're presenting to have the choice to decide whether they like what you presenting or not. Mm. So God presented Eve in front of Adam as if to parade her there and say, you like this? Is this what you would choose? <laughs> oh my God. You, oh my God. And so the Bible says whenever Adam saw, you know, this woman that God created, I, I, I'm just going to just tell you what I believe Adam said. He said, whoa, man, mm, 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 mm. she's going to be called woman. Jesus, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. So God has already given Adam. He's already given Adam the power to choose and he's allowing him to choose. He's allowing him to choose. So in this area of the knowledge of good and evil versus life, he had he had to be given the power to choose in that area as well. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord have mercy, Jesus. Lord have mercy. See, in the area of knowledge of good and evil, if the only tree that had been standing there was the tree of life, Lord have mercy. Let, let, let me back up. Let me back up. 
after he created us in his image with the power to choose inside of us, had he placed us in an environment where there was no choice or a limited choice, he would have gone against his own word. So when you take away someone's power to choose, I believe that's going against God's will. When you take my power away from me to choose what I want, I just believe that's not the way God does things because he placed choices in front of Adam and he placed inside of him the ability to make the decision, but he showed him what the repercussions were going to be. He said to him, I'm going to tell you what the repercussions are. This is what's going to happen if you do X, Y, Z, but I'm going to allow you to make the choice because I made you just like me. And because I have the power to choose and the ability to choose, I have to give you the same ability. Lord him. Oh Jesus, I'm trying. Lord him mercy. Lord him mercy. Lord him mercy. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. So had he only placed the tree of life. Had he only placed the tree of life. Lord him mercy. I need y'all to hear me. It would have taken away Adam's power to choose. And if we don't have the power to choose. It makes God a liar because he said, I made you just like me. I made you just like me. Mm, 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 mm. So even though it was God's will, it was God's will that Adam and Eve live disease free forever. That was his will that they live disease free forever and walk in the garden with him and and listen to his voice and commune with him forever. That was his will. Go back to Genesis. That's what God wanted. That's what God's will was for Adam and Eve. That was his will. But even though that was his will, Adam had the power to choose. Adam is the one who invited. <laughs> I'm getting ready to close y'all because I can't, I can't do no more. I got, I got to, I got to take time to just, whoo. It was God's will that they live forever. But Adam is the one who invited sickness. He invited disease and he invited death into the picture. Not God. Not God. Adam knew the repercussions of his choices because God had already told him. He said, if you eat from this forbidden tree, you're going to surely die. So Adam had two choices in front of him like we do today. One of them is what God's will is, what he says he wants for our lives. And the other one is not. And so Adam chose, of course, as we know, because that's why we're here now, the way we are now, <laughs> dealing with what we're dealing with. But when Jesus came, mm, when Jesus came, Jesus came and took away all that junk. Jesus came and took on those diseases that Adam had invited. Adam invited them to the party, but Jesus kicked them out. Lord have mercy. Adam brought death in. Adam brought disease in. Adam brought sickness in. And Jesus showed up on the scene one day and said, be healed. Bye-bye. <laughs> mm. You no longer have the right because I just paid the price for their healing. I just paid the price for sickness and disease. So you no longer have the right. 
Jesus to dwell in their body. So Adam's choice affected everything God wanted and willed for his life. Adam did. So when you see God's will and you see God's word and you see the truth, listen, y'all, and I got to close. God is not the liar here. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he a respecter of persons. So when you go back through the scriptures and you see what Jesus did and how Jesus healed folk, hmm, this is what I do. I say, Jesus, you are, God is not a respecter of persons. Mm. And I see in the scriptures where folk will heal you, giving me the same power and same authority you have inside of you. Because when you died, whenever the Holy Spirit came, he came and he filled me. He came and he actually has connected himself to my spirit, man. So the same power that was in you as you were walking around here on the earth is the same power that's inside of me right now. And you said I would be able to do what you did and even greater. So disease, you have. Have no authority in my body and so Jesus name in his name by his stripes I am already healed be healed Lord have mercy mm, 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 mm. you know what see what the enemy does is after you say that and let's just say you go and let's just say you know high blood pressure or anxiety is the issue you're dealing with and and, and you speak that over yourself and maybe in the next hour or so, the enemy going to say, uh-huh, let's just see how much you believe what you said. <laughs> and let's just say you might have, let's just say you might have an episode. See, what we do as Christians is we revert back. Oh, it didn't work. It must not be God's will. It must not be his will that I be healed. No, the devil is a liar. You just sir, you heard me say, read about 15 scriptures. So no, what you say is, uh uh, uh, uh no, 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 no. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm healed. Be healed. I'm walking in it. And I'm going to continue to walk in it until I see the physical manifestation of it. You can say whatever you want to say, but I'm healed by Jesus Christ and I'm going to walk in it and I'm going to believe it and I'm going to speak it over myself. I don't care what the papers say. I don't care what this little instrument says. By Jesus Christ, I am healed. And I'm telling you, I know this to be true. Because in 2010, the doctors diagnosed me with two autoimmune diseases. And I wrote a book about it called Be Healed. And I shared it with y'all last week. I'm telling you, I know this to be true. Because I know what my father has done for me. And the same way he did it for me, he'll do it for you. All right? So if you're on here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you want to receive him as your Lord and begin to allow him to change your mind, your thinking so that you can walk in what he says you can walk in and have what he says you can have and be who he says you can be or that you already are. Then I invite you to receive him as your Lord right now. Just receive him. Just receive him in your heart and just simply say a salvation prayer, but believe it as you're saying it because you can say words all day long. But if you don't believe it, hey, you ain't done nothing. So listen, I want you to believe who he says he is and just invite him. Simply say, Jesus, I believe. I believe what the word of God says about you. I believe in who you are, that you came to this earth. You died on the cross for me, was buried <laughs> and rose on the third day. And now I want you to come into my heart. I invite you into my heart. Use me to your glory. In Jesus name. Amen. If you said that prayer and you believe that you just received Jesus as your Lord, I just want you to put in the comment section, I'm born again. Mm. And even if you know what, you said the salvation before, but you just need to remind yourself because the devil been trying to beat you up outside your head. Just put it now, I'm born again, just to remind yourself of who you are, that I'm a child of God. Mm, 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 mm. I am an heir, Lord, have mercy, so that you can remind yourself of what the word of God says about you. Okay? So listen. Send us something in Messenger if, that, if I'm talking to you so we can, you know, connect, pray for you, send your Bible, whatever it is that you need in order for your journey, in order for your journey mm, 
to begin all right so much love to y'all thank y'all for tuning in please share um and again go to my website velissamore.com and go ahead and sign up for the well and if you've done it before sign up again all right much love talk to you soon bye-bye <laughs>